with that as well. Oh, this fucking lighter isn't working. Right. Let's hope that actually picks up. Let me adjust the camera. There you go, now you can see the fire. Hello. Just waiting until the wood catches to actually start doing anything. Wait, yeah, now you're tilted too low. Is that fucking seat wet? Now my ass is wet. Light it all on fire. Light a piece of wood on fire. Something. Results. Let's see them. Don't knock the dead over. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Wood's on fire. That means that we're going to have a fire. <sighs> Hello, audience. I thought I would take the time out of my day to have a nice fire chat, chat with you all. Like a nice little hangout around the fire. That one. I don't have any marshmallows, so we can't really cook anything. We'll just chill around the fire. Maybe I'll tell a scary story. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll tell a scary story. There we go. Just nudged the stuff that's really on fire towards the wood, so the wood would catch. It's going out. What do I do? Uh, wood. No, cardboard. That. I've returned with more fuel. By the way, this is how lighting a fire goes with me every single time we try. It's a long. I think. We'll see if it dies. But for now, let's start with a story. Let's find one that's really good. I don't want this to light on fire. I put too much work into it. I'm not letting it die. Jesus Christ! <laughs> okay, here's one. The Thing Unseen and Elizabeth Becking. Sometime around January 22nd of 1988, Elizabeth Becking and her roommate, Holloway Jean, were moving into their new apartment in a city that I don't remember the name of. Now, is the flashlight too much? I'm gonna get rid of the flashlight. Fire's enough. Okay. A 
Elizabeth Jean, no wait, Elizabeth Becking and Holloway Jean were just moving into their new apartment when Holloway began complaining of strange breathing noises she heard at night. Of course, the two chalked it up to Holloway being nervous about them moving into such a new and dangerous city. So, they brushed it off as moving paranoia, and they continued on with moving in. Is the fan too much, too? Yeah, the fan's definitely too much. So, they continued moving into their new apartment. And, oh shit, the fire is dying! No, put more in! Oh shit, okay, that lit lights very fast, very effectively. Okay, just kind of stuff it in there. Oh my god, my eyes! Where's my poking stick? I gotta get a new one. I gotta get a new one! Yes. There you go, poke. No, stay down. No! <laughs> Okay. So, Elizabeth Becking and Holloway. Holloway. Elizabeth Becking and Holloway Jean were just moving into their new apartment. They chalked the breathing noises Holloway was had been hearing and was worried about up to moving paranoia. So, they continued on with their night and they went to bed. This is about one week into them moving in, by the way. So, around 1.27 a.m., Elizabeth wakes up to hear, to just randomly in the middle of the night, because that kind of just happens to people sometimes. Elizabeth wakes up and hears her roommate in the bunk above her. They, they're in bunk beds, by the way. She hears the roommate, her roommate, Halloway, in the bunk above her, just breathing while asleep, and she hears the... Um, she hears the sounds of the night, and flies buzzing and stuff like that. She hears the sounds of the city at night. <coughs> Trying to put you into the scene. Holy shit, the fire just got brighter. So. Come over here. Go over there. I gotta make a bridge with paper. So it lights the other paper on fire and it stay in that corner. Okay, there we go. That should be good. So, Elizabeth woke up at 1.27 a.m. and is listening to the sounds of the night. Her, room <coughs> her roommate above her, breathing while asleep, which is relieving to hear. Uh, her hearing the flies in the apartment and the city streets below, which I just gave you the ambiance of and I'm not going to do it again. <coughs> So, she goes back to sleep, but she feels like something is very off. She goes back to sleep. And around 8 a 9 a.m. the next morning... Oh, shit, that's ash. She wakes up to go. Such a horrible sight. <laughs> the bunk above her is drenched with a, crim a thick crimson liquid. And she pops out of bed, obviously, because she's startled. And she sees the worst sight you could imagine. Her partner, well not partner, uh, her roommate, Holloway, dead in the bunk above her. Torn open, all of her guts are gone, by the way. Her, her insides just disappeared. Must have been eaten by something or something like that. Blood everywhere. But to this day, the sight that is the worst to Elizabeth is the sight of the fact that her that Halloway's light brown hazel eyes that she knew very well because Halloway and her have been friends since childhood were gone. And instead, in the sockets, were a deep greenish-blue hue of eyes. 
Elizabeth couldn't really explain this, but it was horrifying, obviously, because it was a fucking corpse. And something so minute was different, was changed. Oh god, ash, ash. <laughs> so, Elizabeth calls the cops, the cops show up, they do an investigation, it doesn't really find anything, and, but, another creepy detail is that the coroners determined that the time of death was sometime around midnight, which was a full hour and a half before Elizabeth woke up in the middle of the night and heard breathing above her. Which means that Halloway was long since dead when she heard breathing in the apartment. So Elizabeth, obviously, moves out of that apartment and moves into a different one, alone this time. <gasps> And around, I think, I think it was two years after this event, Elizabeth wakes up in the middle of the night one night and feels like something is horribly off. Her eyes are still closed. She's laying in the bed. She hears the noises of the night. She hears the city. Right? And she hears rain on the window. But she hears something else that's much fainter, much more unsettling. Just above her, she can hear a slight, <sighs> like a breathing. And she knows that this is the same breathing that she heard the night Halloway was dead. She opens her eyes, and for a split second, she sees the worst sight she has ever seen before. Light brown hazel eyes looking down at her from the darkness. They back up, back away into the darkness before she can really get a really good look at them. But she knows she was there. And the sight haunts her to this very day. She was frozen in fear. Oh, shit, the fire. Wait, it's coming back. It's got, ooh, there we go. She was frozen in fear. Holy shit, that's a lot more. <gasps> Move the pipe away. She's frozen in the field. The light brown hazel eyes are still above her. She can hear the breathing, but she can't see the, the eyes because it's so dark in the apartment. She's so frozen that she doesn't even flinch when teeth begin sinking into her torso. Not wanting to believe anything, she raises her hands and covers her own eyes. But when she closes her eyes... I don't know why it's all blurry in the camera now. Oh, there we go. But when she closes her eyes, she feels the teeth pull back a bit. And she feels hands come up to her hands and rip them away from her eyes, but she keeps her eyelids locked shut. And the, the beast is trying its hardest to just rip her hands away. It's peeling her eyelids back and in a last-ditch effort to get the beast to leave her alone, Elizabeth tears her own eyeballs out of her head and crushes them in her hand. And she hears a sickening from the beast. And the beast disappears into the night. It didn't go out the window, or doesn't even seem, it doesn't even seem that it left the apartment. It didn't make any noise. But it was gone. Elizabeth, bleeding from the torso and the eye sockets, stumbles out of her apartment and finds her way to the hospital in town purely by memory, where she falls in, completely covered in blood. And she... she asks for help, obviously. And she recounts this story two days later, after passing out for two days from shock and shit. There have been many stories of the thing unseen, but the story Elizabeth Becking tells is the most, like, credible story that proves its existence. Of course, it doesn't really prove it, it's the story of a blind woman. But, she swears it's true. And, like, why else would someone rip their own eyes out? And no animal could have made the teeth marks that were on her chest. 
and Elizabeth Becking swears to this day that the gaze that she saw above the bed that night still haunts her. A gaze from eyes that were already dead. A gaze that haunts a blind woman to this day. Well, the fire is dying out, and I don't have the energy to try and keep it alive anymore. So, I hope you... I hope you enjoyed this spooky story around the fire. And I uh, hope you have a good night. <laughs> oh shit, that made a lot of smoke. Oh my god. <laughs>